structural justice and nation-building hearings in cricket are due to hear testimony from the current Proteus head coach Mark Boucher and the current director of cricket and former captain Graham Smith. Boucher has been accused of singing a derogatory song which referenced the race of the former Proteus player Paul Adams. Fidoz Munda is the ESPN Crick Info Southern Africa correspondent. Fidoz, good afternoon to you. Let's start with uh, Mark Boucher first. How strong is the case against him at this stage? Sure, Stephen, so much has happened in the last half an hour in that the um, assistant coach has signaled his intent to resign. So I've got kind of a lot of thoughts in my head at the moment. I think, um, I think we're probably reaching an, another perhaps level of crisis if, if we end up with, you know, a, a very sparse coaching staff and, and more kind of talks of unhappiness. I think Mark Boucher's affidavit, which he submitted to the SJN and then released to the media today, was quite strong. It really detailed the background of players in that sort of 90s, mid-2000s era, their lack of preparedness for, I guess, just being part of a normal society or as normal as it was going to get. And then also their kind of naivety and ignorance. You know, uh, we talk about things like the ignorant ignorance where they just didn't know what they didn't know and didn't actually understand that a lot of what was happening was completely inappropriate, culturally offensive, and lacked a lot of depth and understanding. So there was an unreserved apology there was also an understanding that um, things are better in the national team right now. And I think what was really strong in Mark Boucher's favor was that earlier this morning, Temba Bavuma, the white ball captain, spoke before the team goes to, off to Sri Lanka. And Temba Bavuma said Boucher had addressed the team. He'd been very open with them. He'd given them uh, context. He'd, he'd spoken to them about his own playing days, his own coaching days. And they've all started asking quite difficult questions of each other. And they're having this conversation. And I think that statement may uh, really give us a little bit more insight into what things are like now. So do we know, I mean, why did, firstly, why did the assistant coach resign? Do we know? <laughs> no, we don't yet. Um, we don't, actually. We, we only really know that he has... Uh, put in his intent to resign and that the Cricket South Africa board are having some emergency talks with him this afternoon. So, yeah, unfortunately, that's kind of all we know at this stage uh, about what's going on there. There's maybe some suggestion that he's not so keen on traveling anymore. There is uh, a lot of biobubble considerations. And, you know, if you have a young family, this, this thing can really come into your mind in terms of how much you want to do. But not too much uh, other than that at the moment, except that Cricket South Africa are trying really hard to keep him. Okay, so there's a lot going on in cricket, clearly. I mean, with Mark Boucher, so Paul Adams made a claim against him. If he wants to dispute that claim, it could get very, very difficult because there'll be witnesses on perhaps all sides. I mean, is that the kind of scenario that we're likely to see, or do you think it's going to be very different? No, I don't think so. Look, I don't think the claim is being disputed. In fact, the affidavit is quite clear that the song was sung that Mark Boucher participated in the singing of the song with the derogatory term, which I won't repeat. But also, I mean, it must be sort of made quite clear that he wasn't the only one involved in that, that it was an entire team. What there was, I mean, Mark Boucher said, I didn't give him that nickname, and I don't know who gave him the nickname. And he kind of detailed the anatomy of the fine structure and who the fines master was and who the songs master was. And, you know, like, it sounds funny, but it's actually rather juvenile. When we think about the culture of our sports teams, I really think we need to rethink that as a thing. Um, but anyway, so he went into that, and, and there is an admission there that this was, was what was happening. Songs were sung with derogatory names. This was one of them. And, uh, in fact, he also opened the door to one-on-one -on -one discussions with Adams. So I don't think that that will be, uh, become a point of contention anymore. And Graham Smith? Sure, yeah, nothing yet. What we had today was a series of people appearing before the SJN and arguing for an extension on their responses. So there were people from the Titans, the Free State Cricket Union was there, Northwest was there, and Graham Smith was represented by his lawyer, David Becker, and they successfully argued for an extension until September 3. So that means that on, uh, by close of business on the 3rd of September, Becker through his lawyer, oh, sorry, not Becker, Smith through his lawyer will have to supply the SJN with his response. Presumably that will be a written response. And then the following week, those people who have to respond by September 3 may or may not appear in front of the Ombudsman. So there isn't a decision yet as to whether he will appear. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't. Uh, I think that as an employee of Cricket South Africa and someone with such a senior position in cricket, considering the allegations made and considering the, the weight of that testimony that's been that implicated Smith, I think he will appear, uh, and I hope that we'll have access to his written affidavit as well, which I think we will. 
but for now we don't have any indication really of what his response is going to be. I would imagine that, that, that the level of responsibility that Smith bears is on several levels. I mean, one is as director of cricket now, two is as a player himself and would have been involved in these fines meetings, and the fines meetings, if, if you're not aware, a fines meeting is where a group of people get together and drink and they make a ceremony out of drinking alcohol. Not quite sure where, the, where it came from, but anyway, that's what people do, as I understand it. Um, I'm not an expert. Um, and at the same time, Smith was also the captain for a long time. I mean a long time, very successful captain on the field. So he would bear a level of responsibility there. If he knew that a song was being sung about a person relating to their race and he was the captain and he did nothing about it, he would have to answer questions about that. Yeah, definitely. And, and not just that, to, to the entire team culture at the time. So one of the statements I found really interesting in Mark Boucher's affidavit was where he said, we, we achieved as a team so many goals on the field that we wanted to achieve. But in hindsight, perhaps had our environment been more welcoming for everybody, we might have achieved a lot more. It didn't go on to say, and then we might have won a World Cup, because, I mean, I guess you can't really say that, you know, now about something that happened years ago. But it did make me wonder about that, because many of the allegations stem from the 2007 World Cup. So Roger Telemachus, Lutz Bosman, I think Ashley Prince also spoke about that period of time. And that was a World Cup, again, so, you know, so much like 2015, that South Africa could have and maybe thought they would win. And they got quite far there as well. They were in, in the semifinals and then badly defeated by Australia. So I, I do wonder if they're not starting to maybe just dissect and analyze. Would our team have performed better if we were more unified? I mean, it was the number one test team in the world. So I guess you can't get much better than that. But, you know, would they have won a limited overs World Cup? Or just would the environment have been more welcoming? And I think that will be the kind of questions that Smith has to answer to. Because he was captain from 2003 to 2014, so it's a long period of time to be in charge, saw a lot of generations of players and a lot of change in, in the way the team performed. You know, when they started out, they were quite patchy and then they got really good. And by the time he retired, they were the best in the world, in, at least in tests. And maybe we can argue should have won that 2015 World Cup. So I do think there's a lot that needs to be addressed. And then there's also kind of more recent stuff, you know, around the way that things are running in, in cricket now. And uh, the, the issue, of course, that we've all been talking about, about Tami Tolakile not playing. So that will definitely come up and that will need to be answered too, if that's part of his response. I think it could be, yeah, there's a lot that needs to be covered in there. And that's why I think that it would be good if he appeared before the ombudsman. You know, part of it is also you read something on a piece of paper and that's fine. I'm seeing words on a page. But, you know, to hear someone's voice, to, to hear their humanity, to see what comes up as they talk, I think is really important. Um, so, so in a way we've heard, and I mean up until now it's been difficult enough, we've been hearing the evidence of former players, um, most of them people who suffered during this time, so, so almost by definition, uh, if I may use the phrase, I suppose people of colour. So this has been the evidence of racism or alleged racism. Now comes the cross-examination part, and that's a whole different section. This section could actually be even more difficult. This is going to be question being put to person, did you, did you not? How do you feel about it now, about what you did? This is actually going to be very hard for cricket, I would suggest. I think so. I, I think the first part of why it will be difficult is because we don't seem to have a timeline anymore. So whereas the hearings were supposed to resume today and then presumably run for a week or two for the ombuds to submit his report by September 30, now we're hearing that the hearings will only resume again after the extensions have been granted. So we're looking at sometime in September. The national team will be in Sri Lanka by then. And then I don't know how long it will run for, how many responses we'll hear, and when the ombuds will compile his report. So there may be a delay in that. And as you say, yes, I think this will be quite difficult. I do get the feeling that a few of the respondees may not appear before the ombud and they may just submit their written responses and then there won't be any back and forth because then you've written something and, and the ombuds doesn't have the opportunity for that. You know, what we're not clear on now is whether somebody like an A.B. de Villiers will respond. He was also named in, in the allegations. Pierre Hubert was named in the allegations. Um, we know that Jacques Fall from uh, Northern's Cricket Union will be responding. It sounded to me earlier today that people from Northwest and Free State would also be responding. So it's a whole range of people. And uh, yeah, I think this part could get get quite difficult and it has been emotional throughout so I'm assuming there's going to be quite a lot more of that but more so I think um, the schisms that it's going to reveal and the the deep fissures in South African cricket is what we should be really worried about you know this team is going to go and play in a T20 World Cup in two months time and and the women's team are playing in a 50 over World Cup next year and I just I just don't know how much will be left to clean up before they go and do those things.
Sure. Fedos Munda, thank you. The Southern African correspondent for ESPN Quick Info. I really appreciate the time on Newsbeat this afternoon. Thank you.